All right. Long last. It begins. Or it continues. Or whatever. Chapter 5. Cain. A wrenching pain suddenly wakes me. Uh, ouch! I lift myself up from bed. I sleepily check my back. There aren't any wounds. The pain is exactly my back. But more from my spine. And not so much pain as it is the feeling of something hot welling up around the back of my neck. I must have slept wrong. It's a good thing this bed is soft, but when it's too gorgeous like this, all of a sudden, I look down at my hands and my mind halts completely. Uh, was there like a thing? I feel like I remember at the beginning of this chapter there was like a thing. Hey, how you doing? Let me just, uh, quadruple check, because last time... I don't want to get exploded by a tactical nude. <laughs> I'm doing okay, man. <laughs> uh... What is this? I stare at both hands. Red. From my elbows to my hands. My skin is painted red. My fists are a dark vermilion. Okay, I don't think it was here, but I do think that there was, like, a, a nude thing. I had a favor I wanted to ask you. Let me know if you have some time. Sure, I'll let you know. Okay. No real surprises in this route like Heeswee's. You say that, but I feel like I remember there being one. I don't know. Um, no, red doesn't quite describe it. The dried red on my hands is closer to black. <sighs> I don't understand. Last night, I spoke with Kohaku-san in the courtyard and went straight to bed. I didn't do anything to make my hands like this, and I don't remember seeing a nightmare. <sighs> my head is throbbing with pain. I put aside wondering why my hands are painted red. It's almost seven o'clock. I have to go wash my hands before Hisui comes to wake me up. Thanks, you too, man. After washing my hands, I go to the lobby. Shiki-sama? Hisui calls my name. Uh, morning, Hisui. I woke up a little early, so I went to wash my face. Somehow, I managed to blurt out an excuse. Good morning. Well then, what shall we do about your change of clothes? I prepared your uniform in your room. It seems like Hisui was already in my room, and we just missed each other by the stairs. Yeah, I'll go ahead and change after breakfast, so leave it there. Sorry for not being there when you came to wake me up. As you wish. I will go tell Nason, so please wait in the sitting room. Hisui walks toward the west end of the mansion to call for Kohaku-san. Now then. It's still 6.30. I'm sure no one is in the sitting room at this time, so I should go enjoy the morning. Nisan, you're up surprisingly early. And then... As soon as I open the door to the sitting room, Akiha greets me while elegantly drinking some tea. No, I'm the one who's surprised. Managing to respond calmly, I walk into the sitting room. What's going on? Uh, yeah, that's him talking still. Do you usually get up this early? Is it that early? Today I slept in an hour more than usual, so I don't think it's early at all. She seems to be in a very good mood. Usually. Nissan, it's common sense for students to get up this early. Do not assume I'm lazy like you. 
is what she would say. Akiha, uh, did something good happen? I ask, full of fear, to which she answers with a big smile and a nod. Nissan, please have a seat. Breakfast is not for a while, so please keep me company. Uh, sure. I sit on the sofa across from her. She prepares a separate teacup. Some tea is poured onto the opulent teacup. Steam comes out. Even the steam looks bourgeois. Do you want any milk? If so, I can get some. No, this is fine. But Akiha, it just strikes me as odd that you already had another teacup ready. I ask this, being a fairly natural question. Yes, I always prepare an extra set if, uh, so we can have tea if you ever come. But uh, you were waiting me for me, uh, excuse me, you were waiting for me yesterday and the day before? I'm a little afraid of her answer. But she doesn't seem angry at all. That's true, but you don't need to worry. I do it because I want to, so you may do the same. Her words are correct. Besides, I think this is fine. It's good enough if you wake up early only once in a while. Smiling, she brings the teacup to her lips. A chill runs down my spine. Something is wrong. Akiha being calm and kind is very fortunate, but this might be too much. I have to find out what's wrong. Akiha, you... Yes? What is it, Nissan? Um, I hate to ask, but are you still drunk? Huh? Akiha tilts her head to the side like a small bird. I think her eyebrow twitched, but she still holds her smile. Um... I do not necessarily want to ask, either, but what exactly were you thinking? Well, you drank a whole lot yesterday. Well, that amount of alcohol just doesn't go away in a day, so I thought you were still drunk. There's no other explanation for Akiha's good mood this morning. N Nissan, you... She looks down, shoulders quivering. It looks like she's not happy I found out. Here, you don't have to try and act kind, so go back to your room. You can skip school and rest today. I won't laugh. You are so wrong! She slams her hand down on the table. The teacups rattle. Oh, really? Akia, you really shouldn't force yourself like this. I'm not forcing anything! You think that I would do such a thing as to drink so much that I would be drunk the next morning? She pounds the table again. Again, the teacups rattle. First of all, don't make my plans yourself. I don't need your permission to skip school. She stares at me, breathing heavily. I take in her gaze and cross my arms. You're back to normal now. Well... Since you have that much energy, I guess all the alcohol is out of your system. Uh, <sighs> Akiha stares at me, aghast. Nissan, did you plan this? Not really. I actually did think that, though. Your method is a bit sneaky. Why can't you just keep peaceful mornings peaceful, Nissan? Same to you. A peaceful morning isn't something you control. Well... I'm happy that you were always waiting for me, though. But I think it's better if we spend the morning more like this. So go ahead and say the things you want to say. Well, I'd probably be squashed completely if she really did say something every time she had a complaint. So I hope she can hold back at least a little. What's that? More like it is now? Is that the kind of relationship between us? can't we? I just wanted to be honest with each other. I don't want to lie or to hide things. Uh, 
Yeah, me too. Akiha gives a subdued response. <laughs> Jeez, Nissan, you seem to have become a better talker since I saw you last. Back then, you could never calm me down like that. Is that so? Well, that was just me talking honestly. As your Oni-chan, I just wanted to get along with my beloved... No, I can't say that. My dear little sister. Oni-chan? Even if you are just joking, please don't say that. It feels sick. Akiha averts her eyes. She just stares at her teacup. I... do not want to hide things from you either, Nissan. She manages that response. What? Are you actually hiding from some uh, something from Miyakiha? No. Well, if it's something I want to say, then I want you to get up early every day. Really, I was happy when you woke up this early today. So, if you had tea with me every morning, I'd be able to go to school every day happily. Akiha fidgets and glances around. Then... Thank you for waiting! Shiki-san, breakfast is ready! Kohaku-san arrives. Huh? Akiha, you're not eating? Of course not! Akiha-sama already finished breakfast! Shiki-san, if you want to eat with Akiha-sama, you have to get up before six. There's no way that's gonna happen. Oh well. I'm gonna eat. Later, Akiha. Getting up, I head towards the dining room. Akiha wordlessly watches me leave. She wants to say something, but that look seems to be directed not at me, but at Kohaku-san. I return to the sitting room after breakfast to find that Akiha is not there. Instead, I run into Hisui, who's gathering up all the teacups. Huh? Hisui, where's Akiha? Uh-oh. Hold on. I haven't tightened this in a while. <laughs> there we go. Akiha-sama already left for school. Oh yeah, her school is far away. Well, I shouldn't be hanging around either. Yes, your uniform is prepared in your room. When you are done changing, please call for me. Hisui quietly disappears toward the lobby. After changing my clothes, I leave the mansion earlier than usual. I'll come right back today so it'll probably be around 4 o'clock. Oh, and you don't have to wait for me here. As you wish. In that case, please be careful on your way, Shiki-sama. Thanks. I'm heading out. Waving to Hisui as she bows, I go out into the street. I uneventfully arrive at my classroom and start another normal day of classes. <sighs> then, I realize something. Yumizuka's desk is now missing. Even though one classmate is gone, the school schedule resumes as always. Her desk is forgotten, and life goes on. Why? As soon as I realize it, I become uneasy. What happened with Yumizuka was something I could not forget. So why... Why is it that until now, I didn't even remember her? Shikikun, you and I are the same. Those words still burn in the back of my mind. That's strange. But still, I can't think about it deeply. That night... It seems that when Akiha tended to my wounds that night, I lost something. About Yumizuka being a vampire. 
And even now, it all seems too empty. Or was that really a bad dream after all? That can't be true. But I can't deny it that strongly. Even though I'm in a classroom without her right now, I can't recall her that well. From that night until now, something about reality didn't seem quite right to me. <sighs> Excuse me. <laughs> Before I know it, the day is over. I don't feel like seeing Arihiko or Senpai. It seems like I can calm down more when I'm at home. I enter the lobby and see Hisui. Welcome back, Shikisama. Yeah, thanks, Hisui. Are Kohaku-san and Akiha gone? Akiha-sama has yet to return. Nesan is in the rear courtyard cleaning up. Like always, I'll be in my room, so please continue whatever you are doing. Yes, please excuse me. I head up the stairs. Uh, it's Shiki-sama. Huh? I will be arranging Makihisa-sama's room. If you need anything, please call me. Hisui walks toward the eastern end of the mansion quickly. I take off my shirt and take things out of my bag. And then, a white ribbon sticks out between the textbooks. Uh oh. I should probably give this back. That ribbon that I've been carrying for eight years since that day. I returned here to give it back. Uh, uh, I returned here to give back that ribbon, so it's about time I give it back to whom it belongs. I grip it tightly. I imagine myself giving the ribbon to Hisui and shake my head. Eight years ago, we only spoke a few words underneath that tree, but it's a precious memory to me. So. Even though it might sound selfish, I don't want to give it back to Hisui when she doesn't remember the promise. Besides, there's something... I can't quite place it, but there's something not right. Until this feeling goes away, I want to hold on to this ribbon. <sighs> Sitting in my chair, I look at the leaves fluttering down put the ribbon in my pocket. I might meet Hisui if I stay inside, so I decide to cool off outside. I think about yesterday. I spoke with Kohaku-san when I was cooling off in the courtyard. Why did you return? Her face, for an instant, was not her usual cheery expression. Just what was that all about? Huh? Shiki-san, you've grown to like this place? Is she done cleaning? Kohaku-san walks over with me to her room, uh, with her broom, sorry. Uh, no, that's not it. Having her appear in front of me while I was thinking about her, I'm unable to respond quickly. Anyway, I'll just be in Kohaku-san's way, so I should go back to my room. Oh, you're leaving already, Shiki-san? It's still pretty early, so can't you stay here a bit longer? Kohaku-san places the broom on the ground. I didn't want to get in your way. I'm already done sweeping. I've already checked on the flowers, so I'm finished. I have a little spare time before I have to prepare dinner, so I thought that I would come here and relax. She takes off her apron as if emphasizing the fact that she isn't working right now. So, Shiki-san, would you mind talking with me? Uh, no. 
If you're fine with it, then sure. Then it's decided. Kohaku-san says with a smile, and sits down on a chair a little distance away. Actually, let me make a correction. Trying to sit down, she stares at me. Shiki-san, you look like you aren't very happy. Huh? Do I look that way? Yes. If you keep that face up, your glasses will cloud over, you know. Kohaku-san warns me half-jokingly. Anyway, Shiki-san, about our conversation last night. Yesterday's conversation? Which one? About you borrowing something a long time ago. Did you already give that back? Her eyes shine brightly as she asks. Just like the time I received the knife. She seems incredibly curious. No. The person doesn't seem to remember it. That's not the whole reason. But I've decided to hold on to it for now. <laughs> oh, so you'll just steal it like that? It's not like it's a useful thing, right? <laughs> yeah, it's not anything useful. It was nice to get it, but I haven't even used it once. Well... A guy using a ribbon is just weird, and thankfully, I'm not into that sort of thing. What does he mean by that? I see. Hey, Shiki-san. Can I guess who you got it from? Sure. You seem to like that sort of thing. Yes. That de uh, that person definitely has to be Hisui-chan, right? Bingo. Well done, Kohaku-san. It was eight years ago, right? Hisui-chan was the one really close to you back then. Kohaku-san uh, sounds very happy. Uh, really close to me. Is that so? Putting that aside, the promise was a really important thing for me. That day eight years ago, that girl who only watched me came to tell me to give it back. Oh, sorry, that was that was him talking. Oops. <laughs> uh, that day eight years ago, that girl who only watched me came to tell me to give it back. That really saved me. Huh? With a pause, Kohaku looks directly at me. I don't know how it was for her. Without that promise, I think I would have become a miserable person. Those days where I was treated like an unwanted child. <laughs> I was given her most prized possession, and was told to come return it. Thinking that the girl was waiting for me, Tonoshiki, at the place I was supposed to return to. That was enough for me, and I didn't want anything else. Yeah, that's right. That's why I can't simply give it back. If I gave it back to Hisui, she'd just take it away like an empty plate after dinner. I don't want that. I know it's just my selfish notion, but I can't give it back to Hisui yet. I want her to remember it. Since it made me so happy, I want to thank her and fulfill the promise. If I don't do that, I don't think I'll be able to face myself or Hisui. Still, oh, excuse me. Still sitting in the chair, I completely bare my heart. I don't know why I'm telling all of this to Kohaku-san. Maybe there's something about this garden that helps me to talk about the past. Kohaku-san? Is there something the matter? You look troubled. Huh? I feel like I always do. With her troubled face, she smiles like normal. Well, she tries to. Shiki-san, am I really making that strange of a face? She looks at the window glass. In the window is the troubled-looking face, and Kohaku-san just looks at herself in surprise. Kohaku-san? If you aren't feeling well, you can go back to your room and rest. Don't mind me. Maybe you're right. I'll rest and then get dinner ready. Gohaku-san slowly walks away. 
And Shiki-san? Hisui-chan is forgetful, so please be patient with her. Oh, maybe if you take her to the same tree in the garden as eight years ago, she might somehow remember. Kaoka-san picks up the broom and head towards the rear entrance. Uh, to, uh, excuse me. And heads towards the... Uh, heads toward the rear... Kohaku-san picks up the broom and heads toward the rear entrance of the mansion. There we go. Jesus. I see. If I take her to that tree, she just might remember. But that seems wrong. If I force her to remember, that won't make me happy either. But maybe it's a good idea to go see that tree. I haven't been there since I got back. So maybe I'll swing by there when I have another chance. Huh? Come to think of it, I wonder why Kohaku-san knows about... I wonder why Kohaku-san knows about where I met Hisui. Even though they're sisters, I can't imagine that Hisui would just tell her. The promise seems secret somehow. I just can't imagine Hisui, with her personality, telling Kohaku-san like that. Dinner, as usual, is a quiet affair with just me and Akiha. Kohaku-san stands behind Akiha, and Hisui stands behind me during our wordless dinner. The only thing different is the way Akiha is acting. Until now, whenever my tableware would make a noise, Akiha would look up with a scowl. Today, however, Akiha makes quite a lot of clattering herself. In the end, I'm going back to my room. Please clean up my dinner. Saying so, she leaves the dining room behind. What's with her? She seemed so cheerful this morning. Hisui is silent. Gohakusan is cleaning things up in the kitchen like normal. And then... From the lobby, I hear the sound of someone falling. Akia? Fearing the worst, I race toward the lobby. <laughs> there, I see Akia leaning on the stairs. Her breathing is irregular, and I can hear her wheezing from here. Her face is pale, and there are beads of sweat on her skin. I can see with a single glance that she's not okay. Hey, Akia! Don't come near me! <sighs> I stop. Leaning on the stairs, Akia refuses me violently. What? Don't come near you? What are you talking about? I don't know what happened, but I can't just leave you like that. I'm fine. Just don't come any closer, Nissan. What? My heart skips a beat. Akia just breathes painfully. There's something wrong with me. For a moment, I feel it resembles the figure of Yumizuka Satsuki. A a Akia! I'm fine. So please, don't come near me. If you come near me, I'll... She wavers, and then collapses. Akia! I dash towards her. Me... Stop! She still... She still tries to stop me. Ignoring her, I hold her with both my arms. <sighs> her face contorts in pain. As if she's trying to resist something, she bites her lip. Shiki-san! Kohaku-san enters the lobby. Kohaku-san, Akiha's acting strange. I'm gonna get her to bed. Is it alright? Yes. I'll be there right away, so please take care of her. Kohaku-san disappears toward the west end of the mansion at a run. <sighs> Akiha suppresses her cry. Her back arches from uh, as pain seems to flow through her. Nisan, let go! Calm down, stupid. I'll get you to your room. I carry the writhing Akiha in my arms as I go up the stairs. No, Nissan, let go. 
With empty eyes, Aki has still tries to break free. Just be quiet. Just relax and let me handle this. I run through the hallway as I tell her this. Her wild breathing. Her flailing nails. Her fluttering hair. They all rob me of my calm. <laughs> I must be going crazy. For a brief instant, I think I saw a flash of red. <sighs> I thought that was him ranting, whatever. Her breathing seems hot. She grabs me so hard, it feels like my clothes will be torn off. Hey, Akia, rest in your bed. <sighs> she lies down on the bed, still breathing hard. <sighs> the bed shakes, her hair shaking wildly as she claws at her breast. That redness again. It has to be my imagination. As if to dispel the illusion, I raised my voice. Hang in there, Akia. Damn it. What's with this all of a sudden? I stand before Akia, who's writhing in pain, unable to do anything. I bite my lip. Even though she's in so much pain, there isn't anything I can do to help her. I bite down so hard, blood starts to trickle. A red drop falls on the bed. It's quickly absorbed by her red hair. No. I must be seeing things. Her hair is black. The redness I saw just now was because I imagined it. Uh, maybe laying in bed is helping, as her breathing gradually calms. I relax a bit. I suppose if she's like that, she should be alright without me. Kohaku-san will be here soon, and I shouldn't stay in here too long. Rest easy. Kohaku-san should be here soon. I start to stand up. In that instant... No! Akia embraces me. No. Embraces isn't the right word. With all her heart, she clings to me. As if trying to rend me ba uh, As if trying to rend my back to pieces. D D Akia! What are you... I can't imagine this much strength. Uh, I can't imagine this much strength coming from those delicate arms. She grips me hard enough to cause bruises. No, don't leave me, son. Her nails drive into my back. As if frightened of something, she continues to cling to me. How can I break free from that? Her nails rip into me. Despite this. I embrace her shoulders. Akia, it's okay. I'm here. <sighs> her shaking hands, resting her face against my shoulder, she muffles a sob. Akia, if it hurts that much, don't push yourself. You don't have to hold back. No, that's not it, Nissan. I don't deserve anything from you. Saying that, her strength drains from her body. Father, I... I must... To Nissan. She sobs, as if trying to hide it. I must... Must I... Kill him with my own hands? With that, I hear her sobbing. A Akia? I don't want to... What... What should I do? Speaking with a wavering voice, Akiha cries. No matter how hard she tries, she can't hold it in. I just hold her, not saying anything. How long did it last? Akiha sleeps like a child who cried herself to sleep, and I'd lay her slender uh, and I'd lay her slender body onto the bed. Shiki-san, has Akiha-sama uh, Akiha calmed down? Kohaku-san must have been waiting in the hallway as she was standing outside the door. Yeah, she's sleeping. But Kohaku-san, why is Akiha... No, it's nothing you need to worry about. At times, 
Akiha lapses into sudden dyspnea. It's the same as your anemia. Akiha-sama is a member of the Tono family, after all. What do you mean? She's always healthy. Yes, but those of the Tono family all have that sort of illness. Maybe it's inherited, but both you and Akiha-sama carry a variation of Makihisa-sama's condition. Aki, uh, Akiha-sama's condition is not very serious. It isn't something to be taken lightly, but it's not life-threatening, as your condition is. So please don't make such a worried face. I can't help it. She seemed to be in such pain. I couldn't even do anything. Until now, uh, I didn't even know she had that condition. Yes, Akiha-sama tried her best to keep it a secret from you. We were also told to keep it a secret from you. But why? Akiha-sama didn't want to worry you. So please, do not concern yourself and do as Akiha-sama wishes. I don't know what to say. What she says is true. I can't dispute it. In other words, I was the only one who didn't know. I just thought I was the only one with... I just thought I was the only one with problems. Sorry. Please take care of Akiha, Kohaku-san. Bowing to Kohaku-san, I walk away. I go back to my room, but I can't sleep. The frightened figure of Akiha burns in my mind, and I can't calm down. Ow! My back hurts. Blood oozes where her nails dug into my back. Her nails left numerous knife-like marks in my skin. But they don't hurt that much. I look out my window to the distant moon. My worrying heart still cannot calm down. She was in such pain. The illness of the Tono family. My pulse increases. Just thinking about it. I get mad at myself for not knowing anything. <laughs> Red. Blood drips from my lip. It was only for an instant. But her hair was blood red. Damn it. I can't calm down because I'm angry at myself. That's a lie. That hair. Just remembering that color makes my heart beat like a drum. What's wrong with me? Just remembering that red hair causes my blood to boil and my breathing to become difficult. I try not to think about it, but I can't even manage that. Back then, Akiha was just too beautiful. Even now. This was the first time I was so into something. No, or... I think I felt this burning sensation in my head a few days ago. Jeez. I'm acting like I'm in love with Akiha. That... That's also a lie. This excitement isn't any... Uh, this excitement isn't anything as gentle as love. Remembering. And breathing out of control. That's what you call lust. Slapping my face, I collapse on my bed. I can't settle down. Do I stop? Do I have to stay awake like this the whole night? Shiki-san? Are you awake? Uh, I'm up. Goaku-san? Yes. Please excuse me, Shiki-san. Goaku-san enters my room, carrying a silver tray. There's a glass of water and something that looks like medicine. You look like you're not feeling well after all. Before, you looked very worried. I thought that maybe you wouldn't be able to sleep, and I was a little concerned. Kohaku-san steps over to my bed. Kohaku-san, is that something like a sleeping pill? No, it isn't anything that strong. It's something that only helps to relax. If you don't mind, please take it. Kohaku-san sound, uh, Kohaku sounds a bit hesitant. In other words, she doesn't want to offer the medicine, 
but if I can't sleep, I should take it. That kindness really helps. Thanks. I couldn't sleep, so I'll take it. Is it okay? Shiki-san, I heard from your doctor that you didn't, you, uh, that you usually don't like medicine. It's not that I hate it. It's just that the doctor gives me medicine without telling me what it's for. I feel like I'm a guinea pig. But you're different. If it's from you, I can safely take it. I take the glass and down the pill. The water carries the pill down to my stomach. I don't think it's because it works that fast, but the cool water seems to already calm my agitated mind. Thanks. With this, I should be able to sleep soon. Yes. Well then, I'll be going. Sweet dreams, Shiki-san. With a bow, Kohaku-san exits the room. Huh. Stretching out my arms, I let out a deep breath. I should just stop thinking about Akiha. I should go to sleep and wait until tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to save here. And then I believe... Because I feel like I remember there being a thing. So I'm going to full screen for a second. I open my eyes. Thanks to Kohaku-san's medicine, my head is cleared perfectly. I look out the window to the sky, which is clear too. I feel like something good might happen today. After breakfast, I head to school. I thought that I would see how Aki is doing, but I stopped myself. Hurrying things just makes things worse. I decide to just go to school. School's just the same as always. Nothing's especially different. Nothing threatens me. In the afternoon, everyone leaves, and the school building becomes quiet. For no reason... I just killed time until sunset. Night falls. I don't feel like going back to the mansion. I should play around a bit and then decide what to do. <laughs> Finishing it up, I resume breathing. In front of me is a new girl's dead body. Both my hands are painted with blood. <laughs> it looks like I did it again. I didn't really feel like it, but once I started, I just got into it. It's a bad habit. Well, what should I do with the dead body? <laughs> Thud. My voice is the only thing that echoes in the air. But I hear a weird sound at the end. Who is it? I turn around. I hear footsteps along the path leading to the main street. Sweat trickles from my forehead. It's not that I'm nervous. My body's just so hot. There's something wrong. It's so hot I'm thirsty. The dead body's horribly hot. Biting its neck, I drink the blood. But it isn't enough. My world starts to waver. It isn't my imagination. There's something unnaturally hot in the air. Maybe I'm wrong. and the ground is much hotter than the air. This burning heat is screaming, a warning at me. Tss. I run, still gnawing at the body. My head tells me that staying here is incredibly dangerous. I escape to school. No one will see me here. I don't know what that was about. Now, ah, see, there it was. Oh well. Behind me, I feel an indescribable heat. 
I turn around and see what's there. Something that's like red heat. I feel something moving toward me. Damn it. It chases after me. It's a real bother, so I'll just kill it. I grip my knife. The red heat expands. The footsteps of someone approach me. A careless gait. I don't know what it is, but I lick my lips in anticipation. <coughs> Thump. My heart screams at me, telling me that I'm no match for whatever this is. <coughs> I sweat. Not because of the heat. After instinct, my mind understands as well. If that catches me, I'm finished. <laughs> Scared. I escape into the school building. <sighs> I run up the fourth floor. If I come up here, it won't follow me this far. Why are you smiling? <laughs> Taking a deep breath, I realize I'm still biting that dead body. I open my mouth. The dead body falls to the ground with a thud. The arms and legs are still attached. I'm hungry right now. So I guess I'll take care of this here. Creek. <laughs> I spin around. There. There's that unknown person. I knew it was you, Nissan. That person speaks. His hands are bloody. At my feet is the dead body. I've been seen. I've been seen where I killed someone. There's no more reason to be afraid. No matter who this is, I have to finish it here and now. <laughs> Gripping my knife, I run towards the enemy. In that instant... <sighs> my arm disintegrates. <sighs> Stopping, I leap backwards. I barely avoid that red heat. You... What the... There's nothing past my elbow. It doesn't hurt. There's no blood. I can see the cross-section of flesh and bone. From there, a chill nausea enters my body. I don't understand. The enemy didn't do anything. It seemed like it only started at my now missing arm. In other words, just a look can kill. No, that's not right. Dry footsteps echo through the air. The enemy's coming. That's foolish. If I fall into the enemy's line of vision, I'll die. <laughs> In the dark, I run down the hallway. I make it to the stairs. The footsteps sound closer. <laughs> I open the window. This is the fourth floor, but I don't care. The difference between my skills and the enemy's are just too great. I have to get close to kill, but the enemy merely has to look. The only way to kill such thing would be through a surprise attack. For now, I have to get away and kill the enemy later. Outside the window is a web of countless red threads. I stick my body out the window. Instantly, my body burns. Before I burst into flames, I roll back into the hallway. What was... The red threads are wrapped around the school building. I don't understand. There's nothing outside the building, but if I go outside, I'll go up in flames. I hear the footsteps. Damn it. The window is no good. I need to escape. If I don't, I'll die. I roll down the stairs. I make it past the third floor to the second. I can make it. I'm faster than the enemy. No. There's already red hair behind me. <laughs> I roll. I roll. All of a sudden, my leg is vaporized. <laughs> I roll again. Backwards. Away from the stairs. Far above. From above. I hear the footsteps of the enemy walking down the stairs. <laughs> With my remaining arm and leg, I escape down the hall. What's this? Shit! I scream. Even though the enemy's still by the stairs, my body feels so cold. Down the hall, that red heat. The body is... The hallway is hot enough to sweat. 
but my body is cool. And then, the part that still felt cool evaporates. <laughs> but I won't die with such a wound. Like that, I enter a nearby classroom. <laughs> clump, clump. The footsteps come closer. I don't know how the enemy does it. No, that's not it. The enemy's ability to kill, no matter how I think about it, is so many times superior to mine. It's probably that red heat. But the one controlling the power is awful. It can't hide its presence. And it can't even sense its enemy. Footsteps. The enemy is about to walk past the classroom without noticing me. I calm down. If it's only an amateur with a ranged weapon, it's nothing. The enemy passes the classroom. And it's simple. I just have to kill from behind. I only have one leg, but that's fine. I'll certainly slice open the brain faster than the enemy can turn around. I go out into the hallway. I see the enemy's back. How careless. The enemy doesn't even notice my presence yet. Full of confidence, I jump. <laughs> the enemy turns, surprised. I had at least five seconds. It was enough time to kill the enemy seven times. Was. 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 Supposed to. The enemy. The enemy turns to face me with merciless eyes. I'm surprised. You can still move with that body. The enemy speaks. Clang. My knife falls to the ground. What? What is this? The enemy did not need to feel anyone's presence or to protect itself. The enemy's surrounding is filled with heat. Just getting close. My skin roasts, and it stops my movement. It's because that red hair is wrapping around my limbs. I look up. The clouds part. The freed moon uh, the freed moonlight illuminates the enemy. Is the enemy confident it's over? The fluttering hair falls down. It's Akia. I can't speak. But with that, I realize that this is a dream. Goodbye, Nissan. You led me on quite the chase, but now it's over. She looks directly at me. The red hair shoots forth. I can't escape from her gaze. No, that's... that's wrong. The piercing chill from the center of my spine. And then, the feeling of everything being taken. This is wrong. I can still make it. Cut it. Cut that hair. Or maybe... Not being able to do anything. My consciousness fades. This is a dream. So I can't see it right now. Why? Did it end this way? Oh, I'm sorry, that was her talking. Why? Did it end this way? Akiha mutters this like a curse. Then... Good work fulfilling your duty as the head of the household. With a smile, Kohaku-san says this. A nightmare. This is a nightmare. This is just a glimpse of the future. This is an undecided future. So I have to hurry. Back to my own time. Okay. Uh, my voice is actually shot. I think I haven't done this in so long that, like, my voice wasn't used to doing this. That's kind of unfortunate, because I wanted to go longer. But it's probably for the best. Um, so...
So, what was interesting about that chapter just now, that little mini-sode, is that it said, um, I forget the name of the, what the chapter was, but it said chapter 6, but it said it in Roman numerals. And now this is chapter 6. So that was clearly a dream sequence. And it happened right after uh, we took the drug, that, or the medicine, quote-unquote, that Kohaku gave us. So it seems to be some type of um, drug-induced illusion, or drug-induced hallucination, <laughs> or drug-induced nightmare. So, um, yeah, we already know that Kohaku is uh, low-key the mastermind <laughs> behind a lot of at least the events of the far side of the moon. Um, so it's no surprise that her antics are still going crazy in this route. Um, so we will learn more about that in the next chapter. Um, uh, thank you for watching, uh, anybody who's here. Uh, if you're watching the VOD, uh, thank you for making it this far. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel where I've been uploading all the, the VODs of the live reads. Uh, follow me on twitch.tv uh, slash berserkchip. That's berserkchip with two Ps because I forgot the password of my previous account. Follow me on Twitter where I post uh, fighting game stuff, uh, highlights of the previous streams, and updates to my schedule. We will be continuing with Tsukihime and we will be continuing into 2022 with more um, visual novels and live reads. Thank you very much, and we will see you next time.